This presentation will show you how to create a simple work plan. A work plan is created on the Plans tab of the Work Order Tracking application. This is where the work is planned out as to what is being done, by whom, what spare parts are required, and what, if any, special tools are required. A job plan could be attached to a work order if a suitable one exists. There are often times where a one-off work plan is required. The planning process is the heart of good maintenance management practices. We will begin this presentation by going to the work order tracking application and creating a new work order and then planning it out. We'll click on go to work orders module and then work order tracking application. We'll click the new work order button to start a new work order. Give it a brief description. Repair pump. We'll assign an asset to it. We will give this work order a work type of corrective maintenance. And then we'll save the work order. The planning for the work order is done on the work order plans tab. So we'll click the plans tab. And we will begin this plan by entering our work order task in the task section. Over to the right, we'll click on the new row button to add our first task. I will click in the short description, add my first task description. Obtain permission for the work. We can always enter a long description to, if you need to elaborate with more details. If I click the long description button, I may add something, something to the effect of observe all plant safety precautions and click OK. As always, when you have a long description, the long description button turns to an orange tint showing you there is information behind that. And to enter our second task, we'll scroll down a little bit, click the new row button again, and we get our second task, number 20. And for the second task, I'm going to enter replace drive belt, and we'll enter a third task by clicking new row again. For task 30, I'm going to enter replace gasket. And we'll do one more task. Click New Row again. And for task 40, I'm going to enter Perform Operational Test. Now we'll stop at four tasks here. And to save screen space, I'm going to click the orange detail button to collapse that last task. Now this is a very simple work plan. I only have four tasks. You may have 100 tasks on here. It's entirely up to the user how you want to set this work plan up. Now the next part is to enter my labor. So to do that, I'll click on the new row button on the right. It is always preferable to add a craft code rather than a name to the plans tab. So we'll click in the craft field, click the arrow, then select value. And I'm going to search using my filter for mechanic. And this screen shows all of my available mechanic craft codes. Now some of these are outside labor because they have a vendor associated to them. You may sometimes also see a contract reference which indicates there is a labor contract for that particular craft. I'm going to select mechanic on top here. Then this will default to a quantity of one, meaning one mechanic. I can always modify that if I needed more than one mechanic for this job. And last thing to fill out is my regular hours. And I'm going to estimate this job will take about four hours. And that's my labor. The next item to go to is my materials. This is where we'll select the spare parts required for this job. The easiest way to do this, if your asset spare parts is set up correctly, just click on the Select Asset Spare Parts button. And we know we need a drive belt, this V-belt right here. And we also need a gasket. We'll select this gasket. So I select my two required spare parts and click the OK button. And that brings them into my Materials sub-tab. We have to do one more step with materials, and that is to verify the availability of the materials and determine if we want to reserve those in the storeroom or simply buy them directly for this work order via direct issue. So I will open the Details button of my first part my v-belt I can either do a direct issue check the direct issue box and have a purchase order created for this work order or I can enter a storeroom and reserve that item in that storeroom for my work order before I do that I want to see how many of those I actually have available in the storeroom so to find out the arrow to the right of my item field I'll click on that and select the option view item availability and this tells me every storeroom that handles that part and how many they currently have and I can see that right now in the central storeroom, I have at least four of those available. With one reserved, I still have four available. And we'll enter a value in the storeroom field of central to indicate the storeroom we're going to reserve the part in. And now we'll go to our second item, our gasket, and we'll check availability as well. 
clicking the arrow to the right of the item field, view item availability, and we see that we have at least 13 available in the central storeroom. And we'll go to my storeroom field and enter central storeroom. Now both my parts are reserved for this work order in the central storeroom. Last thing we'll look at is tools. There may be some times where you require a special tool and this really refers to special tools and not common tools. Click on select tools. And it just so happens that to replace that gasket, we will need a torque wrench. So we'll select this specific torque wrench. Okay. And we've got our special tool in here. Now I'm going to save the record right now to make sure all fields are filled in correctly. And the record is saved. This completes our work plan. You would probably, after you plan to work order out, approve it. So we'll click the approve button to approve the work order. The work order is now planned out and approved and ready to take action on. I want to look at one more thing. Let's click on the work order tab. And what saves you a lot of time in a planning process is if you had already had a ready-made job plan, you could have attached it to the work order on the first screen, and it would have automatically copied all of your tasks, materials, and labor to your plans tab. We did not in this example. But what we can do, since we spent a lot of time creating that work plan, we can click on Select Actions and Create Job Plan from Work Plan. This allows us to take that one-off work plan we just made and create it into a job plan template to be used again. I will click order number, give it a job plan number. It will automatically copy the work order description to the job plan you're creating, or we can modify it and click OK. Now you will have a job plan template identical to your work plan to use next time. This will save you a lot of effort and time during the planning process of your next work order. This concludes this presentation. Thank you. Please visit our website at www.projecttech.com to see our other training demos. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.